بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان استك الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الحديث هدى حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار بعد. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off which was the third principle So for brothers who are new here we're going through the book called the six principles um, if it's your first time here you can look at the channel and review the lessons if you want from before <clears throat> so we'll just continue from where we left off inshallah last week and that was um the third principle so then uh we'll read the arabic and we'll translate it for anybody who's new here inshallah so uh the sheikh he says uh rahimahullah he says al aslu thalith the third principle أن من تمام الاجتماع سمع وطاعة لمن تأمر علينا ولو كان عبدا حبشيا فبين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا الأصل بيانا شايا كافيا بوجوه من أنواع البيان شرعا وقدرا ثم صار هذا الأصل ثم صار هذا الأصل لا يعرف إن أكثر من يدعي العلم أو يدعي العلم فكيف العمل به سدندش Shaykh, basically what he says here is that he says the third principle uh, and he says and that third principle is from what completes uh, uh, the community, the ijtima um, or that, you know, the Muslim ummah and how it stays together as one community, as one nation is through uh, uh, hearing and obeying the rulers. So hearing and obeying the rulers, the Muslim rulers, hearing and obeying them. So whoever is a ruler over you, uh, talking about the Muslim rulers, whoever is a ruler over you, then you hear and obey. And and Sheikh mentions here, even if it is a, an Ethiopian slave, he's referring to the uh, hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. So then he says that the Prophet Wasallam has clarified uh, this um, foundation and uh, uh, pillar clearly. And it's well known and it's a complete clarification and explanation of it. Yeah. Um, from from two perspectives, from the Sharia itself, the Islamic law, and also that which we see when people, for example, if it's followed, if the Muslim community follows this guidance, you see the benefits. And if you see the Muslim community going away from this guidance of the Prophet wasallam, then you see the negative impacts of it. That's what it means by Sharan wa Qadaran here. So then the Shaykh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, he says here that that is the principle within our deen. However, eventually this foundation, great foundation of our deen, it became unknown to many people who claim knowledge. So then he says, when it became unknown to many people who claim knowledge, then how can we as a Muslim nation act upon it when even the people who claim knowledge themselves, the so-called scholars, for example, uh, who claim knowledge, whether it be a scholar, whether it be a student of knowledge, or other than that, don't actually act, up, uh, don't have knowledge of this uh, great pillar and foundation. And then how can it be possible to act upon it? Because as we know from previous books, um, that to act upon something, you must have knowledge of it. You can't act upon something you don't know. Yeah. So then, the Sheikh, he continues, he says, so so this is the explanation uh, now that we're going to read from the explanations of uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Hafizullah. So the writing below the bold text is uh, from the explanation of uh, the present-day Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Hafizullah. ثم ذكر رحمه الله الأصل الثالث أن من أن من تمام الاجتماع سمع وطاع لمن تأمر علينا ولو كان عبد هبشيا فبين الله فبين الله هذا بيانا شايا كافيا شايا أي ذائيا منتشرا وشافيا أي فيه الشفاية 
والكفاية والغنية بوجوه من أنواع البيان شرعا وقدرا شرعا أي فيما جاء من الدلائل على ذلك في الكتاب والسنة So then the Sheikh says here in this paragraph below he says uh, he quotes what we read earlier just above and then he says that that it's being clarified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger as well but, uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly it's spread it's well it's, it's so spread it's everywhere within the Quran and it's everywhere within the the uh, narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and it's sufficient yeah and beyond that as well so this is what the Sheikh is saying here with regards to the evidence for this principle that we're talking about today so then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Well, adilla to fil Qur'ani wa Sunnati fi sami wa taati kathira." Qala azza wa jal, "Ya ayuha aladina amanu ati Allah wa ati al Rasul wa uli al Amri minkum." Wa fi Sunnat al Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam a hadith kathira jiddan fi sami wa taati. Iqra tarfan kabiran minha fi kitab al Imara min Sahih Muslim. Orad a hadith kathira jiddan fiha al Amr bi sami wa taati liman taamar. So then the Shaykh says that the evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah, the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, regarding hearing and obeying the ruler, uh, then he refers us to the Quran firstly. And this ayah is well known to uh, many of us here, I'm sure, from Surah An Nisa, verse 59. All you who believe, um, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, and those who are. Um, uh, um, your leaders, for example, who, 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 who command you in your lead, who are your leaders, basically. Um, and then the Sheikh moves on to the Sunnah, and he says, with regards to the Sunnah of the Prophet uh, وسلم, then there are many, there are, there are very many uh, ahadith and narrations of the Prophet وسلم, regarding. Um, Hearing or being the rulers, hearing and obeying the rulers, this topic we're discussing today. And he says that there's a huge amount of evidences with regard to that in uh, the book of Al Imara. Uh, I think it's book 59, I'm not sure in the English, but it's called Kitab Al Imara in Sahih Muslim. And you find many a hadith within that chapter regarding this, uh, voluminous amounts of evidence regarding this. Uh, and you know, obeying Allah and obeying the messenger and obeying those who are in authority over you. Yeah, like the rulers. So then the Shaykh goes and says, وَشَارُ mm-hmm. الْمُسَنِفْ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ هُنَا إِلَى حَدِيثِ الْإِرْبَادِ إِبْنُ سَارِيَةِ الَّذِي قَالَ فِيهِ الْإِرْبَادِ وَعَذَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَوْئِذَةً وَجْلَتْ مِنْهَا الْقُلُوبِ وَذَرَفَتْ مِنْهَا الْعُيُونَ فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّهَا مَوْئِذَةٌ مُوَدِّعْ فَأَوْسِنَا قَالَ أُوْسِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَسَمْعِ وَتَعَى لِمَنْ تَأَمْرَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَإِنْ كَانَ عَبْدًا وَجَاءَ فِي بَعْدِ الْأَحَدِيثِ وَإِنْ كَانَ عَبْدٍ حَبَشِيًّا كَأَنَّ رَأْسَهُ زبيب زبيب إذا تأمر عليكم وصارت له الغلبة وتولى الأمر واستتب له الأمر فسمع وطاع والأحاديث في هذا الباب كثيرة منها ما جاء في الصحيح عن الإباء عن عبادة بن الصامت قال we'll just stop there stop there for a second so we can stay on the right track so then the sheikh he goes on to say and he says that the author of the book we're reading the six principles sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab he points us towards uh, the hadith of Al Irbad ibn Sariya anhu, um, regarding what he said where, about the hadith where, um, where they asked the Prophet وسلم, you know, to advise them when they seen the Prophet um, in a state where they felt it was sad. It was sad. And it says here that, uh, and, and, and as we know, this is from the uh, final uh, khutbahs of the Prophet as well. And where, when the Prophet was speaking, they felt, they felt when the Prophet was speaking that, you know, what he was saying, the advice he was given, and the way he was talking and what he was saying, that they felt that, that as if it was the last pieces of advice that he was giving them. So they asked, they said, you know, um, 
advise advisors advisors uh, prophet uh, ya rasulullah they said advisors so he said that i advise you with the uh, with the with the taqwa of allah having the conscious uh, god consciousness yeah so uh, being aware of allah jalla wa ala and having fear of allah jalla wa ala um, and obeying and hearing so ob- and uh, obeying and hearing whoever has authority over you and even if he is a slave and then the sheikh mentions uh, in other hadith uh, with similar narrations where it mentions uh, if it's even if it's an ethiopian slave that rules over you yeah so uh, the meaning being that even if it's uh, uh, even if it's a slave that is is uh, is an author- becomes uh, authoritative over you or becomes an authority over you and that the power is shifted towards that person and that is able to overpower you etc and uh, becomes a leader or in uh, in in uh, in authority then hear and obey so this is from the hadith yeah and then we move on to uh, another hadith that the sheikh mentions and this is from uh, ubadah ibn samit radiyallahu anhu uh, and he mentions here this is where we stopped he says qala ba'ana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sam'i wa ta'ati fi al-usri wal yusri wal munshit wal mukrah wal mukrah wa an wa wa an la ننازع الأمر أهله قال ما لم تروا كفرا بواحا عندكم فيه من الله بران so in this hadith that many of us also have come across then what's being said here is that <clears throat> is that that the the sahaba they 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 swore an oath there was an oath swore an oath with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم yeah that they would hear and obey in in hardship and in ease uh, in when they're active and when they're not uh, and that they don't argue an affair with regards to his people as in the leaders for example yeah and also he said with regards to if you don't see where you do not see clear disbelief and that uh, and and where uh, where you don't see clear disbelief and that you, and and if 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 you do if you do then you have to have the necessary proof with regards to the islamic law and then there's a whole host of uh, discussions after that with regards to how things go about but the main point being that you hear and you obey as long as you don't see clear cut kufr and we meaning clear cut if you do not see clear cut kufr and do not have the evidence and we're talking proper evidence according to islamic law then here and away like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and the sheikh will explain and expand on this uh, as we read through uh, the next uh, th- three or four pages inshallah so then the sheikh continues and he says um, he says here wa ja'at ahadith fiha al waid liman naz' al yad min at ta'ati wa annahu idha mata ala dhalika mata maytat al jahiliyah and also just going back here for here and that you don't take the power yeah you don't here sorry nunazi al amr here i made a little mistake there you don't take the power the power away unless here there is clear kufr and that you're able to that is that's a whole different discussion but that mean that you know if, if there's no if there's no clear kufr according to islamic sharia and law then you do not also do not take the power away we've seen this in the present day ourselves you know what's happened uh, um uh, in recent years when power is taken away what happens to a country um, and we we all seen that with our own eyes um as well so you know this is an important topic so then the sheikh says wa jaat hadith fiha wa al waid liman nazal yad min ta'ati wa annahu idha mata ala dhalika mata maytat al jahiliyah wa yumkin al wuquf ala al al hadith ala al hadith fi hadha al bab في كتاب الإمارة من صحيح المسلم لأنه رحمه الله جمع في هذا الباب قدرا كثيرا من الأحاديث عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then the Sheikh says that you know many hadith have come in uh, with regards to warning from this, to, you know, warning of taking power and taking it away and going away from obedience and obeying. and hearing and obeying the, uh, the the leaders etc and if anybody is doing that then and and he dies then he has died upon the 
the death of an ignorant one or the times of ignorance. And the Sheikh says, then it's, it's possible that we, you know you, you stop upon these ahadith that you read over these ahadith uh, in in the chapter Kitab al Imara in Sahih Muslim, and and you'll see a huge amount of evidences uh, and the hadith themselves of the Prophet ﷺ regarding this affair or what the Shaykh has explained here. So then the Shaykh says, فَهَذَا الْأَمْرُ بُيْنَ فِي الْكِتَابِ وَسُنَّةِ كَمَا أَشَارَ الْمُسَنِّفُ بَيَانًا شَافِيًا كَافِيًا بِوُجُوهِمْ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الْبَيَانِ فَهَذَا بِحَثْ فَهَذَا بَحْثٌ آخر مُقْتَرِحْ So then the Shaykh says that uh, he says that this affair, that it's been clarified in the Quran and the Sunnah, as the Sheikh explained. And he says that the original author of the book we're reading now, The Six Principles, is that the Sheikh, Rahimullah, has is pointed towards, is shown as the clear, uh, sufficient evidences about this principle and that it stands, that it is actually is a principle, the deen, from different angles. And then he says that, then the Sheikh says that he'll also come with uh, a few different perspectives with regards to this. So the Sheikh, is, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al is going to explain this further. So uh, in a number of points here. So he says, Al-Bahth Al-Awwal. So the first uh, sort of, let's say, point of research, uh, the first point of perspective, he says, Al-Bahth Al-Awwal, Wujuhun, or Wujuhun Anwa Al-Bayani Fil Amr Bil Ishtima. So the first, he says, Al Awal, the first uh, point of research for us to ponder over is the many different um, clarifications with regard to uh, being one unit, being one Muslim Ummah upon the Quran and Sunnah as it should be. Um, and he's talking about the evidences here. And he says, and another, he says, Wal Akhir, Wujuh, and Wa Al Bayan, Fisami Wat. And he says, also from, uh, and then another is from the different. Uh, clarif- uh, the, the very many different clarifications in hearing and obeying. So then the Sheikh says, وَهَذَا الْأَمْرُ مُرْتَبِتْ بِالَّذِي قَبْلَهُ أو هذا الْأَصْلِ مُرْتَبِتٌ بِالْأَصْلِ الَّذِي قَبْلَهُ الْأَصْلُ الْأَوَّلُ الْإِجْتِمَاعُ وَالثَّانِي أَسْمَعُ وَطَاعَ وَهَذَانِ أَسْلَانِ مُتَرَابِطَانِ لَا يَتَحَقَّقُ الْأَوَّلُ مِنْهَا إِلَّا بِالثَّانِي لِأَنَّهُ لَجْتِمَاعِ لَجْتِمَاعِ إِلَّا بِإِمَامٍ وَلَا إِمَامَ إِلَّا بِسَمْعٍ وطاعتن. بل إن هذه الأصول الثلاثة التي ذكرها المصنف رحمه الله هنا مترابطة الإخلاص في العبادة وأن يؤدي الناس عبادتهم مطمئنين بأمن وآمان وسلامة وطمأنينة وهذا لا يتحقق لهم إلا بالاجتماع أما إذا كانوا متفرقين متعادين متباغدين شغلتهم الفرقة عن الدين وعن الإبادة وعن الإخلاص وصاروا متشتتين في آرائهم وأفكارهم ووجهاتهم عن الإبادة التي خلقوا لأجلها So then the Sheikh he says here in this paragraph that we just read he says that this affair is tied with that which is before it or uh, that this foundation, it is tied with the foundation or found, foundational principle that came before it. And he says that that is al ishtima And we talked about that last week. That's the um, second principle from the six principles. And it's to do with al ishtima being one unit, one society, one group upon the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah, Muslim Ummah. Um, and then he says the second is, as what we're discussing today, Hearing and obeying. And he says that these two foundations are intertwined. That the first one won't be actualized except that the second one is there as well. They, they, they can't exist without each other. They're, they're together. They, they have to be together. Yeah. Because he said, he explains, he says, because there is no society or group or jama'ah except with an imam. And there is no imam except with hearing and obeying. And he says, rather, um, these three principles that the Sheikh had mentioned, that the author had mentioned, may Allah have mercy upon him, here, they are all binding. They're binding and intertwined. He says, al-ikhlas, sincerity, 
in our worship, which was the first principle that we discussed from these principles. Sincerity, that the people, you know, they, uh, they um, establish their worship and they are content because, and you know, and, and they have this, um, um, uh, you know, calmness and contentfulness and security and peaceful uh, uh, state. Why? Because they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. And he says that this, the Sheikh says that this won't happen or be actualized for for them except with having one, having an ummah that's united upon the Quran and Sunnah as it should be. He says, as for if it, uh, as uh, uh, as for it not being the case, then what will result? We we know what will result. The Sheikh he says that there'll be splitting and differing and uh, 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 you know hate uh, and all of this will busy them and it will result in differing splitting and just having small groups as as we're aware of today regarding the Deen and in terms of worship and in terms of their sincerity. And they will become uh, broken up into small pieces in some groups, with uh, and they'll have different opinions, different views, different directions. As the Sheikh discussed last week uh, when we went through the lesson in their worship, which they were actually created for. So this is what happens. These are all the let's say side effects of not following the Deen and the principles as we should. So then the Sheikh continues. He says. والقيام بالعبادة يحتاج إلى الاجتماع والاجتماع لا بد فيه من من رئيس ولي أمر إمام ولا إمام إلا بسمع وطاعة ولهذا إذا انفرت العقد في هذه انفرت في جميعها إذا نزعت اليد من طاعة ووجد تبعا لذلك الفرقة وإذا وجدت الفرقة ذا ذا الدين وذل الناس قد أشار المصنف رحمه الله قال ونهانا أن نكون كالذين تفرقوا واختلفوا قبلنا فهلكوا فالفرقة هلاك وضياء للدين وتشتت للشمل كيف يتحقق للناس إبادة كيف يتحقق لهم طلب العلم وكيف يتحقق لهم ممارسة مصالحهم العامة والخاصة إذا كانوا متفرقين متعادين متباغدين Let's just stop there for a second because it's a long paragraph. So then the Sheikh, he says, so uh, establishing worship, then the establishment of worship, it, what does it need? It needs for a society to be one operating unit. Yeah, one solid operating unit, a society, a group of people upon the Quran and Sunnah. And he says that this ishtima, this jama'ah, that it's incumbent that it has a leader that I have somebody who takes care of them as a leader at the head. Yeah, an imam, for example. And and he, and he brings the example again. The Sheikh says, there's no imam except with hearing and obeying. And this is the reason that if any of this is left out, then you lose. If you if you if if this is left out, you lose everything. You lose everything. If that power from the leader goes, from the Muslim ruler goes, then you'll you you you'll find these people following something else, and then you'll end up seeing splitting and differing and a, a loss in the deen, and the people will be misguided and misled. And then the sheikh says that the uh, author of the book, uh, Rahmullah, he mentions and this text in bold here, Dabha Green, and he mentions here that he says, uh, and we've been uh, forbid. We, is, is forbid or is, we be made forbid from what uh, that that we don't be like the people that came before us for example like the Jews and Christians and the previous nations that we don't that we, are, we it's forbidden for us to be like those who came before us and then they differed and then they were destroyed because of that differing they were destroyed so then the sheikh says he says that this differing and splitting it is destruction and it's loss to our deen and it leads to the splitting of our nation. So he says, how can one, or how can we, for example, how can we actualize uh, worship then? How can people 
carry out their worship, you know, with all this chaos going on. If that was the result of what, what would happen if people don't follow the right way. How can one, for example, seek knowledge? How can one go about his uh, daily life uh, trying to, you know, uh, do that which benefits him and his family and others uh, generally and specifically? How could that happen if people are splitting and differing and uh, assaulting each other and hating each other? Uh, uh, how would the uh, the uh, laws or the hudud be established? There'd be chaos everywhere. How would you be? How would the people be content upon their wealth and their honors when there's all this chaos going on, all kinds of crazy things going on? So the sheikh says that every uh, uh, he says all of these uh, affairs they don't they they won't occur or they won't actualize or come into action except with the jama'ah that we have this uh, Muslim unity in society upon the Quran and the Sunnah. And he says that that jama'a, this this society, this group, it, uh, it, it won't actualize and it won't come about except except that it has an imam as well. It has to have somebody leading it and leadership. Then that it, it doesn't come except with hearing and obeying. Leadership does not come except with hearing and obeying. And the sheikh says that this is from the principles that. Uh, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu had clarified to us and stated and made clear to us with regards to hearing and obeying. And the Shaykh says, rather, he says, بَلْ إِنَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ ذَمَّ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ فِي بَعْدِ حَدِيثِ إِلَى فَرَائِدِ الْإِسْلَامِ كَمَا قَالَ فِي في, في حَجَّةِ الْوَدَاعِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ وَصَلُّوا خَمْسَكُمْ وَصُومُوا شَهْرَكُمْ و... So then the Shaykh he says that he says rather the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he joined this principle that we're talking about this hearing and obeying he joined it to those things that are faraid that are from the fard from the wajib the fard yeah of our deen as the Shaykh, he says, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in his, uh, uh, in, in the Hajjat al Wada, his last Hajj, his last his speech, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said what we just read in Arabic, meaning that worship your Lord, pray your five prayers, fast your month, i.e., Ramadan, Ramadan, and establish paying the zakat and obey those who are ruling over you. And if you do all of that, you will enter the paradise of your Lord. So that's clear from there. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, فَذَكَرَ الطَّاعَةُ لِذِي الْأَمْرِ مَذْمُومَ إِلَىٰ إِقَامَةِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَصَوْمْ رَمَضَانِ وَجَعَلَ هَذِي كُلِّهَا من موجب من موجبات دخول الجنة قال تدخل جنة ربكم فأكد عليه الصلاة والسلام على هذا الأمر وجاء أيضا عنه في في حجة الوضع أنه قال عليكم بسمع وطاعة وإن تأمر عليكم أب. so then the sheikh he says here that if we look at what the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said and what is mentioned with regards to obeying uh, the leader then it is it it's, it's within the same Within the same breath, what was mentioned, the prayer, giving zakat, um, uh, fasting your obligatory fast, i.e. I, the month of Ramadan. And that this was all, all of it was made obligatory upon us. And if whoever carries this, uh, whoever carries this out, then it's, uh, then from these wajibat, then he'll enter Jannah. So then the Sheikh says, and he quotes again, that you know, whoever does this, then you'll enter the paradise of his Lord, of your Lord. You'll enter the paradise of your Lord. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he clarified clearly, yeah, here, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, regarding this affair. And then the Sheikh says also, it came uh, uh, within the uh, Hajjatul Wada, the, the, the last Hajjatul Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in the Khutbah, he said, Alaykum bisam'i wa ta'ati wa inta amr alaykum abd. 
upon you is hearing and obeying even if a slave rules over you. Yeah, which you mentioned earlier as well. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, وَجَاءَ عَنْهُ أَيْضًا فِي حَجَّةِ الْوَضَعِ الْجَمْعُ بَيْنَ هَذِي الْأُسُولَ الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّتِي أَشَارَ إِلَيْهَا الْمُسَنِّفِ فِي هَدِيثٍ وَاحِدٍ فِي مَسْجِدِ الْخَيْفِ خَتَبَ النَّاسِ خَتَبَ النَّاسَ فِي أَوَّلِ أَيَّامِ التَّشْرِيكِ فِي مَسْجِدِ الْخَيْفِ مِنْ مِنَا كَمَا فِي حَدِيثِ جُبَيْرِ فِي حَدِيثِ جُبَيْرِ بْنُ مُطْعِمِ فِي حَدِيثِ بْنُ مَسْعُودٍ قَالَ يَقُولُ جُبَيْرُ سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في في الخيف من منا يقول نظر الله عمرا سمع مقالتي فوعيها فعداها كما سمعها فرب حامل فقه غير فقيه ورب حامل فقه إلى من هو أفق من ثلاث لا يغل عليهن قلب عمر مسلم إخلاص إخلاص العمل لله ولزوم ولزوم جماعة المسلمين ومناصحة ومناصحة من من ملاح الله أمرهم. So then the Sheikh he says here and he quotes he says and also it came with with uh, within the Hajjatul Wada the the coming together of these these three principles are mentioned in one single hadith as well. This is another evidence. In uh, when the Prophet ﷺ was giving a speech in uh, was Masjid al khaif and he was speaking to the people. So he was speaking, he was addressing the people in the uh, the first of the days of at uh, Tashriq. Yeah, uh, in the Masjid al khaif in Mina, uh, from Mina. <clears throat> And and this is reported in the hadith of Jubair ibn Mut'im radiallahu anhu fi hadith ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qala he said he said that uh, Jubair said that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Khayf in Mina he was saying and if we look at the if we go and we translate this then the translation of that is give me a second and I'll find this inshallah get the translation so we don't make any mistakes <clears throat> so from Abdul Rahman ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that he narrated from his father from the Prophet Sallallahu who said may Allah beautify a man who hears a saying of mine so he understands it remembers it and conveys it perhaps he carries the understanding of fiqh to one who has more understanding than him there are three with which the heart of a Muslim shall not be deceived sincerity in deeds for Allah giving advice to the leaders of the Muslims and sticking to the jama'ah, the Muslim group, the Muslim ummah, for indeed the call is protected from behind them. Yeah. So this is the hadith, yeah? the translation, the meaning of the hadith. So then the Shaykh says that these principles, all these three principles that we've been talking about so far in this book, six principles, the first three principles, then they all are contained within this hadith. And he mentioned this here. And he says that the Prophet ﷺ informed Regarding, you know, what what we just read in, in, in English Regarding this hadith And he explains it as, as we've read it in the hadith So there's no, there's no, uh, no more to really add <coughs> So the shaykh, he continues, he says وَالْمُسَنِّفُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab لَمَّا سَنَّفَ كِتَابَهُ مَسَائِلِ الْجَاهِلِيَّ أَلَّتِي خَالَفَهَا الْإِسْلَامِ بَدَهَا بِأَضْضَادِ هذه الثلاثة قال المسألة الأولى الشرك والمسألة الثانية التفرق والمسألة الثالثة عدم سمع وطاعة والاستكبار عن سمع وطاعة هذا جاهلية هذه جاهلية شرك وتفرق وعدم وطاعة والإسلام جاء بالتوحيد وجاء بالاجتماع وجاء بالسمع وطاعة وهي أمور وهي أمور مترابطة. So then the Sheikh also gives an extra benefit. He goes on to say. He says that the author of the book, may Allah have mercy upon him, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, when he authored his other book, another book that is authored called uh, Masail al-Jahiliyyah, the affairs that pertain to, uh, 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 to uh, pre-Islamic ignorance, that uh, 
that basically go against Al-Islam. And he said, he mentioned, he began with the three things that oppose the deen. The first three things which we've been talking about today in this book. The Sheikh says, as in the first affair in, his, in this book, Masar al-Jahiliyyah, the Sheikh says the first affair, he says, a shirk, as you all know, shirk, polytheism. He says, al masra al thaniya the second affair, splitting and differing, at the farruq splitting and differing. And the third mas'ala, the third affair, um, uh, um, the, um, oh, not, uh, let's uh, put it in English, it'll be easier, uh, in, if I say it like this, not hearing and obeying the leaders, for example. Ad musami wa ta'a, yeah? The, uh, uh, no presence of hearing and obeying. Or the, uh, yeah, we'll keep it like that. And then the Sheikh also mentions, he says, and so arrogance, arrogance with, with regard to hearing and obeying, having arrogance, because of the arrogance, you're not hearing and obeying. He says that this is jahiliya, this is ignorance. And he says here that shirk, polytheism, and splitting and differing, and uh, not obeying and hearing. He says all of this is it's, it's ignorance. And he also, so he mentions the opposite of that then. What's right then? With, with the, th the, the three opposites of this, which are the three correct things, which are uh, uh, opposite to this. What is it? It's Al-Islam. Says Al Islam came with Tawheed, monotheism. It came with calling to be one united body and group upon the Quran and Sunnah. And it came with the principle of hearing and obeying the leaders. And these affairs, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, they are bind, they're binding, they're together. One can't be without the other, they're all together. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say, he says, uh, so we did that earlier on in the hadith. The Shaykh goes on to say, Qala Aidan al Ulama fi Ma'nahu Anna Man Wujida Indahu Hadi al Umur Thalatha Intafa Min Kalbi Hil Ghil Min Wujida Man Wujida Indahu Hadi al Umur Thalatha Lichlas de la Wa Luzumul Jama'a Wa Nasihatu Ali Wulat al Amri Falaisa Lil Ghilli Fi Kalbihi Makan. So then the Shaykh says that, you know, this part of the hadith that we read earlier on. He says that so the scholars also say with regards to what it means is that if if any of this is found, these three are found in the person's heart, then then hatred or dislike or that grudge or those sort of meanings that you may hold or harbor in your heart, then they are negated from you. For example, whoever is found in a person Three affairs, let's, uh, uh, the Sheikh says, Al-Ikhlas, sincerity for Allah Jalla wa ala alone, and sticking to the Jama'ah, yeah, and advising the rulers, advising them sincerely, then for this kind of person who carries these characteristics, there is no place for hate or any kind of hatred in his heart. And that's proof. And this principle can be used as a yardstick for you, for us to check if somebody is ignorant of what the Sunnah entails and whether somebody is upon the Quran and Sunnah, as they may say. So this can be used as a yardstick as well with the evidences and the proofs. Uh, proofs. So the Sheikh, he goes on to say, Amal ikhlas. So he's going to break down these three points. He says, Amal ikhlas. So as for sincerity, he says, فَإِنَّ قَلْبَهُ مُتَّجِهًا في أعماله كل ما لطلب رضا الله لا لمطمع دنيوي ولا لشهرة يريدها ولا لحضور تخص تخصه يتمع بها وإنما أعماله وإنما أعماله يقوم بها مبتغيا بها وجه الله إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله فهو في معاملته للناس ومجالسته لهم ومحادثته لهم كل ذلك قائم عنده على الإخلاص والمراقبة لله تبارك وتعالى فمن كان هذا شأنه أين سبيل الغل إلى قلبه وقلبه معمور بالإخلاص للمعبود سبحانه وتعالى. So the Sheikh makes a very important point. He says here as for sincerity, then when we're talking about sincerity, then he says that that the person's heart it's, you know, it's 
it's uh, his actions, all of his actions are to seek the pleasure of Allah. He does all of his actions, good actions, to seek the pleasure of Allah. And that's sincerity. He's not doing it uh, to for something in the dunya. He's not doing it for something in the dunya. He's not doing it for fame that he wants. And he's not doing it for to gain things within the dunya. And that he can, you know, enjoy them, you know, in his, in his worldly life. Rather, his actions, they're established upon what? Upon... Uh, seeking the face of Allah Jalla Wala. And then the Shaykh brings the ayah from Surah Al Insan, which we read in Arabic, that we we feed you for for the face of Allah, seeking the face of Allah. We feed you, you know, as in the poor people or doing good actions. Why? You're not doing it for them to say thanks to you, or thanks, uh, brother so and so, thanks, brother so and so, you're doing a really good thing. No, you're, you're doing it for Allah's sake. So people's thanks there. Thanksgiving to you doesn't, you know, you don't, you do, it doesn't, you're not doing it for that and it doesn't affect you because all you're doing it for is Allah Jalla and that's the ikhlas. So then the Shaykh he says, and then this, these sort of actions uh, uh, and dealings with the people and sitting with them and you know, these things that you that do, he goes, all of this, it's upon ikhlas, you see, it's upon ikhlas and it's also upon that you know that Allah is watching you. Allah sees you and he hears you and he knows everything you do. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So if this is the affair of a person in this kind of description and these kinds of characteristics, then how can any kind of hatred or anything be in his heart? Clearly on what's apparent is that this person is free of this hate and uh, this, you know, uh, the nature of having grudges in, in his heart. Because his heart is populated is full of sincerity and worshipping Allah Jalla wa Allah and, uh, and sincerity for Allah Jalla wa Allah. So then the Shaykh goes says, ثُمَّ يَنْذَمُّ إِلَى ذَلِكَ حِرْسُهُ عَلَى الْجَمَاعَةِ وَنَبْذَهُ الْفُرْقَةِ وَرَغْبَتُهُ فِي اجْتِمَاعِ الدِّينِ وَاجْتِمَاعِ أَهْلِهِ عَلَيْهِ فَمِثْلُ هَذَا الَّذِي هُوَ مُلَازِمٌ لِلْجَمَاعَةِ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْهَا حَرِيسٌ عَلَى اجْتِمَاعِ لا يدخل لا يخل إلى قلبه الغلة لأن قلبه متجه إلى اجتماع كلمة كلمة المسلمين والنبذ الفرقة فالغل ليس له سبيل على قلبي. and then looking at the second point then with regards to اجتماع being upon one united body being a body single body then if the person is calling to that upon the Quran and Sunnah of course then when you look at that you see this person striving hard doing that trying to help the people teaching them the right things from the from the deen trying to bring about this within his own family and external to that then when you look at this then you, you how can we say or think that the person is um has a, a harbors any kind of hatred you know especially when the person is trying to join people upon the quran and sunnah and at the same time uh, uh warning people from uh, differing and going away from the Quran and Sunnah. And this is what we mean by differing. Differing meaning that you're you're going away from the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're not following the Quran and Sunnah. So if you have a person like this who's uh, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil in this in, in, from this perspective, then how can we say the Sheikh says how can we say that the person harbors any kind of you know ill you know you know um, what would say the word in English would be like any kind of hatred or or, or um, uh, grudge or any kind of feeling like that within the heart. Yeah. He goes on to say, he says, the third point says, وَإِذَا كَانَ نَاسِحًا لِمُولَاتِ الْأَمْرِ فِي, قل- فِي قَلْبِهِ بِالدْوَاءِ وَسُعَالِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَسَلَاحُهُمْ وَهِدَايَتُهُمْ وَتَقْدِيمُهُ لِلنَّصِيحَةِ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَاعَ بِالْوَسَائِلِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ وَطُرُقِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ إِذَا كَانَ بِهَذَا الْأُسْلُوبِ وَبِهَذِ الطَّرِيقَةِ لَا يَكُونُ فِي قَلْبِهِ غِلٌّ وَلِهَذَا هُنَا تَجِدُ تَجِدُ الْفَرْقَ بَيْنَ الْعَالِمِ وَبَيْنَ صَاحِبِ الْهَوَى كَمَا قَالَ كَمَا قَالَ الْبِرُّ بِهَا البربهاري رحمه الله في كتابه شرح السنة قال إذا رأيت رجل يدعو للسلطان فأعلم أنه صاحب سنة وإذا رأيت وإذا رأيته يدعو 
ala sultan fa'lam annahu sahibu bid'ah wa huna yatabayyan al farq sahib sunna yahumuhu ijtima' al muslimin wa ya'rifu an ijtima'ahum la yakunu illa ala imam wa ya'lamu anna salah al imam salahul salahun lir ra'iyah ولهذا كان الف... ولهذا كان الفضيل يقول so let's just stop there for a second we move on to the next uh, uh, quote so the sheikh says here that he goes on to say so looking at the third point of advising the rulers then if you see a person advising the rulers as well so this is the characteristic that he holds advising the rulers and uh, in his heart for example he you know when he's uh, making supplications He's asking Allah Azza wa Jal for the uh, uprightness and the guidance for the rulers. And and when he can physically, for example, he's trying to uh, take the ways and means to advise the rulers, whatever he's able to do, was you know, from the ways and means with regards to the Sharia, Islamic law. He says that if he's, then, if you see the person with these ways and these methodologies, then, then, it's not possible that there's any hatred or grudge or or malice within his heart because he says here uh, you find the difference we see the difference uh, between a person who's alim knowledgeable and the person who is a follower of his desires and this is how we uh, differentiate between these two types and he says as uh, al, uh, Al-Imam Al-Barbahari May Allah have mercy upon him Said in his book Shara Sunnah He said "If you, This is important to pay attention to He said If you see a man Yeah uh, Supplicating For the Sultan For the leader Then know That he is A person of the Sunnah And likewise If you see a person Supplicating Against The ruler then know that he is a person of bid'ah, religious innovation. Yeah, and it's important. So the Shaykh, he brings some extra benefits from different scholars. He said, so, so that's one of them. He goes on to say, this clarifies the difference between the two. We have on one hand, a person of sunnah. What is important to him is uh, keeping the Muslims united and strong upon, as one body. Upon the Quran and the Sunnah. And he knows why. Because he knows that them being together. It can't, uh, he's, it can't be accepted with an imam. So he understands this. And he's a person of the Sunnah. Because he's following the, pro- the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In, in what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us with. As we've read earlier in these last few pages that we've been reading. So the Shaykh says. And he also knows. He knows that the rectification of the leader is automatically rectification of the citizenship. Why? Because if the leader is upright, that's going to have a knock-on effect on all those people below the leader. And then he says, and he continues to say, and he says, this is why uh, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad says, and I will read the rest in Arabic where we left off. لو كان لي دعوة مستجابة لجعلتها للسلطان قال عبد الله بن المبارك ومن يقدر على هذا إلا مثلك. so let's just stop there then Alkarion. so Alfudel said, uh, رحم الله. he said that if if I knew that there'll be uh, if I was given let's say a uh, one supplication that Allah let's say Allah said to, uh, one supplication that 100 percent it will be answered for you. He said that I would make that supplication for the leaders. That's what he said. I mean, most of us might think automatically about ourselves. But if you look at the wisdom behind this, then we see what the Sheikh said earlier in the last two lines that we read in English earlier, just before we read this line, is that with the upright of the openness of the ruler and the guidance of the ruler, everybody else benefits, you know. Everybody else is upright as well and can be upright, you know. Then... قال قال عبد الله بن مبارك عبد الله بن مبارك رحمه الله said to him الفضيل said and who else is capable of this except you you know because 
he was amazed, you know, by by him, by Fudail saying this, you know, that if I'd won dua that would be answered, then I would make it for the leader. I would make it for the leader. Yeah. So the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, هذه درجة في الفقه عالية ما يصل إليها كل أحد. The Sheikh says that this, if you look at it and if you ponder over it, this is its its fiqh understanding of the utmost highest degree. Not everybody reaches this level. If you pon- truly ponder over it and we reflect over this. And then he quotes again what uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah, said, that only, you're, only you, Fudail, are capable of saying that, you know, coming out with that, what you mentioned. So the Sheikh says, لو قيل الآن لأحدنا لك دعوة واحدة مستجابة أدعو بشيء واحد معين الآن وتظفر به إلى ماذا يتجح يقول عبد الله بن المبارك من يقدر إلى هذا إلا إلا مطلق الآن هذا قلب كبير الذي يقول لو كان لي دعوة مستجابة لجعلتها لسلطان هذا قلب قلب كبير لأنه لأنه استوعب الأمة بالدعوة بالدعوة المستجابة لم لم يخصها لنفسه so let's stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says, what if, one of, what, what if one a person today was asked, was the same thing was said to them? You know, you got one dua that you can make, it'll be answered. What would they call to? What would they ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for? You know, it's just a, a, a rhetorical question. And then the Sheikh goes back, he says, Abdullah ibn Mubarak says, and who else is capable of saying that? Going back to what Fudail said. He says now, he says this is a is a huge thing, because because the dua that Fudail said that he would make the Sultan, what does it mean? It means that the, he's doing it for the leader, but it encompasses the Ummah as a whole, the Ummah as a whole. He didn't he he didn't just make wanted to make a, he didn't want to make a supplication that was specific to him. He he made a, a supplication was such that encompassed him and everybody, including the leader and everyone, the Ummah. And so the Sheikh is just uh, reiterating this because of uh, because of the great example, you know, from the scholars of the past. So then the Sheikh says, So because the Sheikh said that, because, you know, if you, if you make dua, a supplication to Allah to rectify uh, to rectify the rulers, then it automatically uh, uh, um, affects the citizenship. Why? Because the leaders at the top they have effect and have uh, power over and have effects and you know influence on those who are below them and follow them. So then the Sheikh says, "Ida tabal Malik tabal Jund," and he gives me the example. So if if the leader has um, the leader. Uh, you know, is upright and correct, and 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 is good. Then so are the uh, the people below him. He gives example, like for example, the, his, his followers. For example, from his citizenship, you know. And he says, مثل قال أبو هريرة as Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه said, وإذا طاب الملك طابت ال طابت جنوده. So uh, as uh, that's the same thing as we just said before. So the Sheikh says, وَنَاسُ تَبَعُونَ لِمُلُوكِهِمْ فِي الْغَالِبِ وَإِلَّا قَدْ يُفْسَدُ الرَّيْسِ أو, ال- أو الْوَالِي وَيُصْلِهُ عَدَدْ مِنَ الرَّيَّةِ وَلَكْسَ أَيْدًا لكن الأصل أن الناس تبعون لِمُلُوكِهِمْ So then the Sheikh says here, he goes on to say, that he says the people, they, they follow their leaders and those people in charge for the most part, for the most part. Yeah? And, he says that, you know, on, on the flip side, it can be the opposite, but he says that it's rare, it's very rare, the op- the flip side of it, where you might have like leaders going wrong and and the the vast majority of the people themselves are actually on, are on point. But he says the foundation is that the people, the foundation is that the people, they follow their leaders. This is the general, from the, 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 the general point of view. The Sheikh says, Wali Hada, هذا قلب كبير لما يقول لو كان لي دعوة مستجابة لجالتها لجالتها لسلطان. So then the Sheikh quotes again. He says that's why if you see if you look at the bigger picture, then you see that the the impact of this du'a that Fudail made. 
Yeah, because it covers everyone. If if you do it for the for the uh, Muslim leaders, it covers everybody below them, and that shows you the understanding of this great scholar of the past, and it gives an example to us as well. And then the Sheikh says, "بخلاف لو أن خص هذه الدعوة بنفسي فهذا من الفقه في الدين." So then the Sheikh says, because if if he made the dua or the supplication just to himself, then 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 you know as uh, that that would be the uh, opposite of of the dua that he made. It shows you the great understanding that the scholar had that he made it for the leader because he knew that if he makes it for the leader, then it affects everyone, including him as well, in goodness. Yeah. And also, then the Sheikh brings. He says, he says here, he says, but Sahab fil Hadith. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Qala la tasubbu umara'akum This is important as well The Shaykh says here that With regards to You know uh, The leaders How you speak about them Don't insult them Don't swear at them Don't say bad things about them The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this La tasubbu umara'akum Don't swear ill talk Badly talk about your leaders He forbade this so then the Sheikh goes and says, "Ida kan al insan lahu du'a fal fal yedu lahum bi salah bil hidayah bil istiqamah li anna salahahum yaudu ala rayyatahum ala rayyatihim ala mujtamaihim ala al muslimin wa hada bab min al fiqh ma yasilu ilayhi min 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 man dakhla qalbahu al hawa wa la yasilu ilayhi al insana." إلا إذا كان على السنة سالما من الهوى ولهذا لا يغل لا يغل يأني من كان عنده نص لولاة الأمر لا يغل به لأن النص نصها للولاة يطرد الغل أو يطرد الغل كما أن لزوم الجماعة يطرد الغل كما أن الإخلاص لله تبارك وتعالى يطرد الغل so then the Sheikh says the last three lines of this paragraph that we're reading here. He says that, that the dua, when you make the dua, rather you should make a dua, yeah, that your supplication should be for the leaders, for their guidance and for their uprightness. Because their uprightness and rectification, it returns to, the, it goes, it also affects the, the citizens, the people below them. And upon the society as a whole, and upon the Muslims, of course, it says that this is a, a, um, a, a subject with the, of fiqh that does not reach every. It doesn't reach. It doesn't enter everybody's heart. It doesn't reach, and and it doesn't reach the heart of the one who's following his desires. It doesn't reach a person um, uh, except if he is upon the sunnah. As it should be The correct authentic sunnah And that he is Safe Because of that he's safe from desires It doesn't let desires enter his heart And affect his way of thinking And his approach and perspective of life And the way he approaches things So if a person is correct then Upon the Quran and sunnah In this, uh, in this subject we're discussing today That the Sheikh discussed Then there is no hate or malice Or anything like that within this person's heart Whoever has advice for the, his leaders, then you know that there's no malice or anything within them. And that malice or whatever it might be is far away, pushed away, excluded from his heart. doesn't exist. Uh, likewise, like um, sticking to the jama'ah, uh, the, the people upon the Quran, so not sticking to as one jama'ah, then this also uh, excludes that person from having any of this malice in his heart and hatred and um, good, you know, this grudgery and these sort of characteristics and that ikhlas, that his sincerity for Allah wa ta'ala, then if he has this sincerity for Allah, Allah wa ta'ala, then also this gets, it negates this um, um, uh, malice and hatred and having, holding grudge that it negates it from being in his heart. So let me just see how long we've got to go. We've got another page, so uh, I think we'll, inshallah, we'll uh, stop. We'll stop here. I think it'll be a good, good point to stop. We'll continue, inshallah, from page 19, this paragraph, uh, next week, bin la ta'ala.
Subhanakullah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik. We'll leave it there inshallah and uh, we'll continue next week brothers at the same time. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.